I think we're on. Welcome everyone. This is Quantum Healing with Candace, and it is the 29th of August 2018 and I've been looking forward all day long, actually more than that, many days long to be able to welcome my wonderful friend David Manning with me here today. We're going to be talking about trusting the field and that's what many of you out there as healers and even if you're not a healer with a shingle hung out and helping others we're all healers really we're healing each other this time on the planet and trusting the field is such an important topic and that's what we're going to focus on today so let me introduce david manning to you david is a wonderful energy healer a great friend and a real voice of what's going on in the world again energetically as we move into this new age. Welcome, David. It's so nice to have you. Oh, Candice, I, I really appreciate the invitation. And as always, it's lovely to uh, to connect with you and, and to get to chat with you. And I've not really done a Facebook Live before, so thank you for initiating me into, uh, into this whole field. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. You're welcome, but guess what? I'm going to have to say, you know, you're, you're incorrect about that. We did a little Facebook Live in a park together. We did, in Regent's Park, and that was the first one, a little, a very brief little introduction, but this is the first official, official one that we've done, so, um, so yeah, I appreciate your, uh, I appreciate your pushing me into this, because it is something that I've been intending to do for a while, so, uh, so and I always watch you 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 just churn these things out you you do them all the time rescuing animals in the garden or on the street and there's a Facebook live with you running around with your phone and I'm just amazed at how um how impromptu you are with all of that it uh, it never ceases to amaze me huh? <laughs> well well thank you I you know I think all the time in my mind well there's a lesson here or there's something interesting about that that I want to share so I guess that's kind of how I end up doing that. But um, what I wanted to talk to you today about is this, this amazing idea of trusting the field. You sent a newsletter out about an event that you're having pretty soon. And, and I love the way that you introduced the, um, the event because you talked about the fact that you were not writing many notes and you were just going to trust the field walking in. And then you described the magic that was there. And as much as I'm interested in the event, which I, I would like for you to tell everyone about that, of course, I am so interested in that bigger concept of trusting the field, not only when you're getting ready to present, but really all the time, right? Yeah, and I can't say I'm, I'm there. I'm not living in that space where I'm trusting the field all the time, but, uh, but I have had quite a, a an intensive training in this process of trusting that what needs to happen what needs to be said what needs to emerge in any given situation will be there you know so years ago when i was first starting leading classes and um teaching for want of a better word and it's not that's not an accurate word at all, but I was leading. I was, I was up front in a class and I'd be walking into the class thinking, I have no idea what I'm meant to be doing here. And, um, and as I would walk into the class, I would feel the energy would download into my field as to this is what we're doing tonight. Or sometimes I, rem there would be, I would be walking up the stairs into the class thinking, what are we doing? What are we doing? And bang, there it would be. The class would lay itself out in my awareness. And it was like... Often I would literally be scribbling down notes the day before or the, the evening before, and then those notes would, would disappear. I would lose them. They would fall out of my pocket on the way to the event or whatever. And again, I'd be stood there thinking, what are we doing? What are we? And something would happen. And that, wouldn't, that was never an easy thing for me because I'm not a natural public speaker at all. Um, and it's taken me a long time to just move through the, the layers of fear around standing in front of a group of people and thinking, I have no idea what I'm going to say. Uh, but over time, then that, that trust deepens. And over time, you know, the, the blinkers of fear that are here sort of fall away and there's a much wider experience of, oh, yeah, the field has got this, and I'm just a part of the field. And when I 
step forward as a, a leader, if you want, for an event, um, then I become the spokesperson for the field. And so now what I do is ask the field, okay, what is it we want to communicate here for this? Um, I do a lot of work at a place in London called the College of Psychic Studies and they like their program is organized months in advance and we're doing that now. I'm, I'm just having to prepare um, notes for classes and workshops that I'll be running there in six months time. And I hate that idea. It freaks me out that I'm pinning myself down to something now that I'm not doing for six months time. But again, over time, I've learned to trust that when I'm asking what is it we're going to want to communicate in six months time what emerges and it usually emerges very quickly and I scribble down a paragraph or two of notes about what it is and then I forget all about it and I come to be you know in six months time I'll show up and think oh look look how appropriate that was I wouldn't have known to do to plan that far in advance but now that we're here at this event and it's perfect for now um, and so that process happening over and over again has really taught me to trust the process. And trusting the field is the same as trusting the creative process, that, that something will show up that wants to emerge, that's going to be useful for whoever has um, parked their backside on a seat and is, is waiting for something to unfold, you know. So it's, it's been a, a, an ongoing process and, and one that is a very rich source of learning. But I think anybody that's doing this sort of thing can relate to it. I've just never been one of those people that I was never allowed in a sense to make copious notes and do a presentation step by step in that way. So, um, and it recently it's got more intense in that I have uh, started to run bigger events, longer events um, that uh, run over four or five days, retreats. And um, the first time that this happened was last, last October in Morocco. Again, run through the College of Psychic Studies. And uh, we went, I was there a day before the event was due to start. And the night before I was lying in bed with this awful, awful panic. And all I wanted to do was pack my bags and leave a note on the bed to say, sorry, I can't do this. I've got to go home. And uh, I had a, a sleepless night because I, I was in this horrible state of fear, uh, really unpleasant. And then I walked into our meeting room the next morning. And as I sat into the chair, I thought, oh, this is going to be perfect because I could feel that the field was present and it knew exactly what needed to happen. I didn't have a clue. All I have to do is show up empty enough so that the field can work through me. The field can communicate through me what, what is wanting to be communicated. Um, so I, go I have some questions. And, and one of the things that, that brings me to have you to talk to us today about all of this is you know, we work in a, in some ways in a similar way and in some ways in a little disparate way. So what you do, and it amazes me that, that you even have uh, to say that you're a little uncomfortable in front of people. It seems like you're so natural at it and you do it so well, so fluidly. But when we as quantum healing practitioners, when we do these sessions with, with clients, and, and, you know, I just released the class, the Beyond Quantum Healing class, and, and we go over all the different things that can happen and all the different things that might happen. And, and we, we kind of look at all of the different pieces of um, types of experiences that can come through and how you might handle that. And what I'm noticing is that we are trained, especially in Western society, we are trained to, of course, intellectualize and pre-plan out things using our mental faculties all of the time. And I know this, and of course I, um, 
accommodate even in you know, this thing because we're trained that way. I was brought up that way. We, we all were. And we're trying to kind of break out of that, right? So even doing something like these quantum healing sessions, I have a notebook and I have these processes. But when you're sitting with the client, what I'm talking with a lot of other quantum healers about doing is you have all of that training. You have all of these things you can fall back on, but then just set them there and do exactly what we're talking about today. Trust the field. Yeah. Just kind of see what comes up. And, and, and I love the people in our community so much. Their hearts are so so big they're waking up they're wanting to assist others and, and some are, are you know been doing this for a long time others are just starting but we're still wanting to intellectualize a lot and so what I was kind of hoping you might it maybe it's impossible to do David you tell me how do we begin to do something as vague as this thing called trusting the field how do we it's it's such a big thing to say right it is, and it seems you know, when you're doing it, it's the most natural thing in the world because I, I look back now and realize my whole life has been a preparation for this in a sense. So I have to acknowledge that I've done a, a terrific amount of shadow work. There's been a lot of really deep excavation of the type of wounds that many people don't even begin to look at, you know. Um, long deep painful run-ins with addiction cancer sexual abuse all of these sorts of things that i've really <clears throat> had to work thoroughly through my system and that i know now when i've done that i can hold space for somebody else and i can trust that whatever is wanting to emerge in their field the personal field um i can hold space for that because it's happened, it's already happened in mine. And when we've cleared our personal field of something, it means that from my perspective, eternity shows up in that space and says, look, I'm here with you. You're not on your own in this. Um, and that's my experience, you know, that I am backed up by the whole of the universe in this. So when I'm working individually with a client, Again, all I do is watch their field and there's this flow of what I call grace through my field into this and all of any protocols I learned and there weren't many I have to admit um, <laughs> go out of the window and I just watch the field the interaction of this flow of grace that comes through my field and how it interacts with the personal field of my client. And so I've done that for year after year after year, watching that. And again, really trusting that process um, and seeing what miracles happen when I move out of the way and give up control. Um, and of course, that's a big challenge for us because we're trained to be in control. A big advantage for me was that I didn't, I didn't go down the, um, the intellectual path. I graduated from high school in American terms. In, in British terms, I got A-levels, but only just. You know, I didn't study. I was too busy down the pub drinking every night. So I, did, you know, I didn't engage my intellect because I was very traumatized as a child and was out of body, in effect, dissociated. So it was difficult for me to concentrate in school. I was always ashamed of that, but now I realize that that out-of-body experience held gateways and lines of energy open into other realms that are now very useful. Then I just thought I was a complete flake, but now I realize that that, that too was part of the training. So I think in order to do this, you it's the same old, same old. You have to do your shadow work. You have to clear your personal wounding and make space in that. Because if we haven't, we're perpetually going to be frightened. We're perpetually going to be needing to control. And we're not going to be trusting the beneficence of the field. We're not going to be trusting that the universe has our back. And that's ultimately all this is about, is trusting that 
the universe has got me. I am held in the, the wider field of universal benevolence that holds us all. Um, but it's about, and I'm being trained in this to a deeper and deeper level every day, just trusting that the universe really holds me and that I am, I am loved by creation itself. I am an intimate part of creation, relating to other aspects of creation in this crazy world that we're um, engaged in. And, and that trust is what uh, deepens for me all the time. So it's basically, it's just about engaging in the spiritual process and it's the step by step by step process. But how I work now is very different than how I worked 15 years ago. You know, my trust has been stretched and expanded uh, dramatically over that time. So wherever somebody is at is, is perfect, but it's, it won't be where you're at in six months time. Huh? So, you know, when you were in that letter that you put out in the, the, the you know, the, the, the upcoming event description. Yes. In the newsletter thing, yeah. Yes, so beautiful. It was, and I'm sorry if I don't. If you, if you guys are hearing my my Facebook thing go, I don't, I don't know how to turn that off right now. So sorry, ding, ding, ding. All of what that's many of that is wonderful people here uh, talking about what's going on with our with our conversation. I'm afraid if I turn Facebook off in the background, we might blow up the show. So sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, for people who are new to this, right? You know, you in your newsletter talked about, well, Native American spirits came and then these other things you, you were able to see. And I, I can already hear and think those out there who were like, well, how can I trust the field if I don't see things like that? If I'm just now trying to hear my own intuition and follow my own heart and, and feel my own energy, we are so trained to be cut off from that. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, from the very beginning when we're children, we are trained to be cut off from that. And as I sit, and I've been here seven weeks now with my daughter, and we're talking a lot about and she's she's going to be homeschooling her children. And one of the main reasons is, is whatever that is, it's, it's almost, in, in our opinion, from what we can see, that's even, it's getting worse. It's, it's even worse. The, the, the system the, uh, itself it wants to cut you off from that even more than when you and I went through it. Yeah. And, um, and, and more so when my daughter went through it and, and now to the nth degree when my uh, grandchildren are going, uh, growing up in this world. So how, what are some things that, that you might tell? I mean, anybody who wants to trust the field, but maybe even or more so even, I, I think about this show really as one speaking to so many of my friends who are practitioners out there. How, what would you suggest some ways of thinking or opening or softening to be able to, to do that could even be? Is there, is there anything to do or not do? Um, you know, and then, and then you have to kind of laugh at that because that right there is a protocol and intellectualizing doing something that, <laughs> that we're saying don't do that <laughs> yeah and you know the, but it, but there are things you know i mean there are hundreds of thousands of books written about this process the the, the spiritual unfoldment process and that's all it is really so i would say some of the things that really worked for me was the understanding that everything that has ever happened or will ever happen in my life is happening to help me evolve and that moves you out of victim consciousness perhaps more quickly than would otherwise happen and it helps you to see things from a different perspective. So if you end up in front of a group of people and your notes, you've spoke coffee all over your notes and you can't, you can't read what it is you've written. There's a part of you that can breathe and trust and think, okay, this is happening for a really good reason to help me evolve. And you might fall flat on your face and make a complete ass of yourself. But the next time the fear levels will be less. You know, it's this sort of thing of recognizing that 
even the most difficult, challenging situations that we grow up with are designed to help you become who and what you are rather than have been put there to limit and wound you. Sometimes the wounds are made to be so ridiculously in your face that the only thing you can do is walk through them because it's like I'm either going to die or or let go of this, you know. Um, so that has been a really significant thing for me is that just the willingness to accept that everything is designed by life to help me evolve. And um, that leads me into or to just to see the beauty of all of these situations. Um, but again, looking back, I can see how <laughs> even the books that I really liked have been sort of dropped along my path to, to help me see how this works. And my type of awareness, which I have to say, I thought a lot more people would be working with these expanded fields of awareness by now, but it still seems to be taking a while to, to really come online in, in the collective. But wherever we're at with our, I don't even like to use the word psychic abilities, but our expanded sensitivity is going to be perfect. But there is always room for expansion. And part of that is trusting too that there is, you know, the personal field is held within containers of limitation that are the identity structures we have built up over many, many lifetimes. Those are in a sense what have to loosen and dissolve in order for us to expand into this amazing sense of being held by a bigger field. Uh, there isn't a shortcut for it. You just have to accept that where you're at is totally, totally perfect. As I said, it'll be different than where you're at in six months time. But if you ask the field, show me how to, show me how to trust. Um, show me how to expand into this sense of allowing, because that's all it is. It's an allowing of the natural wisdom that we're all immersed in every second of every day, just allowing that to present itself, trusting that it knows far more than I do about any given situation, about what's going on in that person's energy field. You know, it has the information. I don't. I'm not, um, I'm not clever. I'm not wise. And maybe there's a lot of use in, for me, not training my intellect, not going to college, not getting a degree, spending far too much time drinking and smoking, you know, doing all the things that you shouldn't do, um, because that left me perhaps with less of a complicated intellect um, to break down, <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> maybe. Does that make sense? It, it does. And you know what? So, of course, as you talk, um, and maybe that's why this is so wonderful, you, uh, the, the connection of you, the things that you're saying, bring up some things for me to think about. And I find it absolutely amazing. And maybe it's just because I'm so fond of you. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I, I love being in your energy field. There's something about listening to you uh, that, um, that brings things up, that brings things, you know, up for a lot of people. And that's why maybe we gravitate to listen to, to other people, maybe uh, either one-on-one -on -one or in groups or whatever. But do you know when you were talking about spilling coffee and being completely unprepared, so you were describing that, do you know something happened you, that triggered a memory in me as I'm listening to you when I was five years old and in kindergarten. So that is 52 years ago. Yeah. 52 years ago, I remember standing up and I was supposed to sing my Bonnie lies over the ocean. <laughs> My Bonnie lies over the sea. <laughs> yeah. And, after, and I couldn't remember after like the first thing, I couldn't remember what it was. And I'm, I'm standing up there and there's, you know, all the parents are out there and I'm like, and then I just start laughing. There's like the microphone there and I just start laughing. And I'm laughing hysterically because I can't remember the words of the thing. And I should 
and I started to be very afraid and wanting to like pee my pants or whatever, but I just started laughing. But do you know that I can still see that audience, how they were laughing too, but laughing because it was actually wonderful. It was a much better show for me to have forgotten those words. The tension was broken. They were laughing. I was laughing. <laughs> I didn't have to remember anymore. We all had so much more fun. And I don't think I have thought about that. I can't even remember the last time I thought. Maybe not since I was in elementary school have I even thought of that. Um, but look what being in your presence, talking about trusting the field, did to even my own intuition or my own sense of being given a gift, right? It was just the moment of seeing, you know, being in front of that audience and, and, and laughing, and it was the best thing ever, completely unplanned at age five, right? And so a lot of us would have integrated that experience as a huge trauma and shame and a massive wound that would have taken you know endless amounts of therapy and healing to get over and a real big block in the throat and so the fact that you just were a natural child and laughed <laughs> stopped that integrating as a wound and it became maybe a gift because you have no problem in talking in public you do it very easily huh yeah it didn't didn't bother didn't bother me a bit for for whatever reason um and, and I, do you know that I actually a little bit wondered why I was always like that until maybe today here after talking with you. So <laughs> thank you once cool. again for helping me to understand, understand myself. You know, another thing that I talk about uh, when I talk about with practitioners about dealing with, um, dealing with clients or, or being in that situation is feeling a little bit like they have to fill up every bit of time with something, that there can't be moments, even small moments of silence or, or quiet. Um, what do you think about that? Does that come up ever? Did it used to for you? Um, well, what used to come up for me was performance, that, okay, they're paying me money. <laughs> So they expect me to come up with the goods, you know, um, and I used to think, okay, I've got to find clever things to say and all of that sort of thing that I would need to be the professional. Um, <laughs> not that I ever was particularly. But over time, and I think this happens for most of us, is that you really get to see how extraordinarily wise is the energy field, the system, the wisdom of the body, it's all, it, it knows what it needs to do to unravel and heal itself, you know. Animals do it very naturally. They shake, they shiver, they, um, they run, they roll in the grass, whatever it is, you know, when they've been wounded. Um, and animals don't hold on to physical wounds or pain in the way that human beings do. But we, because we've got these complicated emotional systems and mental bodies, <laughs> everything gets shocked and stored and held and because whatever in the west and in our civilized societies we're trained not to process these things naturally to intellectualize it all so again it comes down to trusting the personal energy field and the wisdom of the body that it knows exactly what it needs to do and we're just helping somebody to hold space for that, for whatever it is that needs to emerge, whether it's, you know, a piece of emotional trauma or a deep memory or, or laughter or just physical tension, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but the system knows what it needs to emerge. Now, there's an advantage for me in terms of seeing patterns and structures in the field and how energy is moving through those, but we're all capable of that. I really believe we're all capable of sensing in our own way. It won't be the way that it is for me because we all have our own capacities and capabilities that have been trained in this and other lifetimes. Um, but it's about, again, giving space for those to emerge so that we're not constantly overriding the subtle signals that are landing in our own 
field in our own body about what's happening, what it is we most need to do to support our client in their process. Um, so it's the willingness to just get quiet and listen with that inner listening um, to what your system is telling you and to what their system is telling you. And that is the field. You know, that's the field in your office, in your practice space, in your workroom, whatever it is, um, that you're, you're paying attention to. And doing that, because the field always wants us to expand and evolve, so it will always take you into bigger fields of experience. Um, as you get used to one thing and as you get comfortable, then everything changes and you're not allowed to be comfortable for long. It's okay, we move on to a bigger field of experience and I know you know that well. Huh? So, um, so yeah, trust the process of life because that is the field in itself. It's life itself that, that is the field that we're, um, that we're removing our separateness from. All of these layers of identity hold us with an idea that we are separate from each other and from, from life itself, in a sense, that we're needing to control it and life is coming at us. But life is actually emerging from deep within us. And uh, it gets filtered through all of these layers. And the less of these layers, or the, le the more permeable these layers are within us, then the more free flow there is, the more sensitivity we have, the more awareness of what is going on for my client or the group field in a room or something else that I have awareness of and, and work with a lot other deep um, collective fields. And I get to feel into those and see some of the currents that are emerging in that. But I, I don't for one minute claim to see everything, just a tiny, tiny portion of what actually goes on enough to keep me interested and, and, um, and give me stuff to do. Huh? <laughs> so. So as you're talking, I'm thinking about a few things that you're saying now. Um, uh -huh, yeah, but they're taught, there's some people asking about your YouTube channel. I said, I'm not sure you have a YouTube channel. And someone's like, uh-huh, I found it. <laughs> you have a YouTube channel. You're I do have a YouTube channel. I'm not, I haven't been particularly uh, active on my YouTube channel, but sign up for that. And I, I will, I am intending to become more active again on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Well, you know, we can take this video and I will be putting this on my YouTube channel because it's really oh, cool. cool. So I can pop yeah. it online as well. That's great. Absolutely. Absolutely can do that as well. So going back to what we were talking about, though, the, the, the subtle part about it, um, I think that's a really important word, you know, to try to be soft enough in your presence, in your own presence with your own self to allow the subtle things to come through. I love also the words that you use, permeable. You know, when we are, when we are so hyped up all the time, and I'm a type A personality naturally, so I'm constantly giving myself this lecture about <laughs> really just like pay, just paying attention to my, you know, my muscles. There are times it's like, we, you know, just look, you just just stop that, okay? You know, <laughs> I mean. And I think sometimes just just that simply, you know, you you can sit and then you can kind of sit. And sometimes just doing that, giving that little gift to your body, for those of you out there who are anything like me and can get, uh, you know, anxious or tense, or you're always on the go, very, you know, very much of a doer and, uh, you know, going all of the time. But allowing yourself a little of that, not only is it nourishing, I mean, you, you really need it. it. It's healthful and nourishing, but that's where some of the subtle things can come in and, and play themselves out the way they may in your own, you know, sense. I, you know, you talk about structures and you talk about um, flow. And the, again, these are big words that to some people out there, they hear them a lot, but they're not sure, well, what does that mean? And it's, but you don't want to be so much that you're defining it. Well, it is when this happens, because if you get to where it's so defined, so 
tightly, then it won't match somebody else's and then they think they're doing it wrong. So that's why these are like, these are vague things. You know, for me, they're, they're kind of memories and there's analogies always going on, you know, hence my Bonnie lies over the ocean thing, you know, that comes up, it comes up as a, as a story, but there's so many different ways. And I was thinking too, when you were talking about the permeability and the subtle fields, when, when we do these, these beyond quantum healing sessions, very often wonderful storylines come through storylines or, or experiences or very linear types of, um, expansions happening by understanding of uh, situations and uh, relationships and things like that can happen. But there's this other part that's happening and it's happening more and more in these sessions where clients will go into a place where they're like floating in fields of color. They're floating in fields and, uh, and or, or there's a big light here and they're in ribbons of pink and purple or whatever. And then they're coming out of it, not always, but they're coming out of it with both sometimes the practitioner and oftentimes the client going, it didn't work. It didn't work. Nothing. And it's like, oh my God, no, don't say that because it, that is part of it working in this new way yeah. that we yeah. are opening up to. This is that is stepping into an expansive different field right it doesn't always have to be this linear thing totally from my perspective that's really um a beautiful thing you've touched on because i think we're starting to move beyond the stories now into and the stories are a layer that have held us locked you know the stories of past lives each of those past lives is an identity, a layer of identity that believed itself to be really important in that lifetime, as important as we believe this identity that we're wearing in this lifetime is. And yet none of them are particularly real, um, but they've held us locked in fields of limitation for a long, long time. And now we're starting to move beyond those storylines are recognizing well i'm not my stories i'm not the wounds that i've accumulated over however many incarnations and we're dropping into the places that we're not wounded into those fields of light that are both external out there in the universe but also internal we're dropping into these deeper places that aren't bound by the structure of the stories that we've carried. And, and that's really, really important. And it, it's the earth. I mean, I was connecting with the earth. I do that a lot. And she has told me, okay, I'm not holding your history any longer as a species. We're done with that. So the trauma fields that we've stored in the earth and in our own personal field, she's telling me that's over. That's done. There's nothing more to be learned by doing that now there are the fields of wisdom that we have also stored in the earth that are now waiting to integrate because collectively we've done enough of the excavation we've done enough of the trauma recovery process so that we can now start to really integrate the fields of wisdom that that we are the lifetimes before we were so deeply wounded um all of that stuff is now waiting to upload and download and integrate into our systems to get us out of the almighty fucking mess we find ourselves in at this point in time. And it's really important, you know. So I think that's beautiful to hear that you're getting more and more of that experience where you're just finding your clients in fields of light because I think that's really important. And I was told years ago, David doesn't really exist. David is just a construct. It's an identity you're wearing, but there's no such thing as David. So don't pay too much attention to David and what his needs are. Because, and it's, you know, when I first heard that, it's like, that's a shock, you know, because I really believed in David. Um, or I didn't, whatever, <laughs> one, one thing or the other. But I really believed in that structure. And now it's much more permeable than it was. You know, I don't need to take so much notice of David. And I, that allows me to be 
shot through by other fields of energies that wouldn't move through this system if David was very tightly arranged and holding on for dear life, you know. Um, it still does, but it, it's it's much looser in in the the overall fabric of my makeup, and I think that's where we're all going. Is this? I remember reading in a book by Barbara Brennan, her first book, Hands of Light. Her work is amazing. If anybody um, needs to look at books on healing and and the structure of the energy field, uh, but it was something, and I won't remember this properly, but allow. Um, we're remembering how to allow ourselves to be lightly dusted by form and that's it so that we are these extraordinary fields of light that are lightly dusted by form and that to me is, is beautiful because we are the marriage of heaven and earth we are infinite and eternal spirit coming into matter and we have felt overwhelmed and imprisoned by matter and now we're recognizing actually that because energy comes before matter and everything is energy, in fact, as we remember ourselves primarily as energetic beings that dip in and out of physical experiences, that dip in and out of various bodies over vast periods of time, then we can allow ourselves to be lightly dusted by form rather than locked in and bound by form. And that's... Um, that's very beautiful when that starts to happen, I think. That is, I, I don't remember reading that. I've, I've read some of Barbara Brennan's stuff, but I don't remember reading that as amazing. So as you're saying that, and I'm thinking, and the dust should be stardust, right? <laughs> and it is, isn't it? It really is. We are twinkling, sparkling prisms and fractals of light that... Um, that are those beautiful ribbons, you know, and when you were talking about those ribbons of light, the image I was getting was the, um, the Northern Lights, you know, what we call the Northern Lights. It's that, um, that play of light perpetually moving, perpetually creating something new. Uh, and we get stuck in our histories um, that kill us, in effect, because we die of... <laughs> we die of those wounds that might have happened centuries ago, but they're still pulling on our life force that should be available to keep us vital and and new in this moment, rather than feeding our history from 5,000 years ago. But we all still, we were talking a few minutes before the call even, um, many people are talking about this idea of feeling a great purge or an unraveling. But I mean, haven't we used those words for years now? Uh, just kind of perpetually and somehow we think that okay so when that's over we're going to be done right <laughs> and then the next one comes and it comes and it comes and it comes you know but it's happening more smoothly don't you think it you know it doesn't have it doesn't have the same intensity what used to take me two weeks to move through now moves through in two minutes you know so it and that part is also about trusting the field trusting the process it's like oh yeah I've been through this a hundred times before. I don't need to cling on to this because I know the movement of this through my field, through my body. I know how this goes. I drop down. I need to take a rest. I need to go to bed for an hour and it flows. You know, I need to drink water, go for a swim, whatever it is. And we get to know how, how our process moves and we don't linger in victim place for a long time. We move out of that because that gets boring and things just move, you know, and slowly slowly and quickly quickly now we just move through those patterns so much more smoothly so much more easily and i think as a collective we're really in this cusp this year is now moving us out of that deep purging uh into something much more beautiful and i think you know for a lot of the planet maybe they're not doing this work maybe they're not up for this sort of evolution in this lifetime i don't really know uh but for those of us that are deeply engaged then enough work has happened in the collective field to allow us to shift into a different phase and i think that's where we're at now on the cusp of really shifting into a different phase and of course we're all at different places on that spectrum because we're all 
at different levels and points in our evolution. But, um, but I think this is a really significant point now, moving beyond the, the stories of wounding into the remembrance of, <laughs> of truth, which is, which is beautiful. You know, we are extraordinary beings having a deep, deep experience of limitation. And I think we're sort of done with the experience of limitation and now we're remembering um, vastness. And that's uncomfortable <laughs> when you've been contained very tightly for thousands of years. To uncontain yourself is a, it's an uncomfortable process. We all know what it's like having pins and needles because we've sat on our, on our feet for too long or something. It's a bit like that, but on a, on a mass scale. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky, but, but we're getting there, I think. Huh? You know, when going back a little bit to the um, the idea of the color fields and the light information, you know, we hear the words over and over again, field, light, trust, holding space, you know, and when you're first maybe waking up or listening to some of this, you know, there's a lot of eye rolling and, um, you know, what are you talking about? And it sounds so woo-woo and, and ridiculous, but... Um, but the words that we use, most of us tend to use, they really have these, these basis, the ba you know, it, it really is uh, light. <laughs> it really is light, you know, and it, it's not a metaphor. It's, it is this thing, you know, and, and it, it is this thing that's going on in us and around us. And I have to go back to the, the ribbons of color again, you know, where, where the one client is I just get this you know letter from the client who says you know I had this experience so it failed you know she's telling me about this this experience she had with a separate practitioner so you know it failed so now I'm looking for somebody who's better at this and and of course I'm counseling her and talking about what my perspective is but then I'm remembering a client that of, of my own that I had that found herself in the the identical place like you know there's this light and then there's these ribbons in this color and with a little more softness and with a little more um, acceptance and allowing of the information um, the the imagination to sort of be tickled into helping us use words to be able to communicate to each other what's going on here what ends up happening for this particular client is she follows these, these colors, follows these ribbons, and she descends into this experience where she says, this is the tapestry of the Akashic records. Hmm. And she is then able to, and I'm on one thread of it. And, and, she's, and it was the most spectacular, it didn't really have a storyline, like no protagonist, no past life or whatever, but she was experiencing this, this big place, this big idea, this big maybe wisdom and knowing and understanding. And it was because she wasn't pushing against her expectations or trying to make it a linear thing, whereas maybe this other client who may have been the, in the exact same place, don't know, of course, but because of expectations and wanting to pack it into uh, the construct and the definition of what something valuable, a valuable experience in the way that she knew from before, you know, I, I'm watching some people start to be able to break free of that, to go, it doesn't have to look like what it did for others. It doesn't have to look like what yeah. Uh, what these other people said. It can look like something completely different and be just as valid without this comparison thing. And it's important to recognize that how it was for me six months ago, well, it won't stay like that either, you know, so we can't go into an experience expecting the same results because it might look completely different. I have clients that show up for, you know, session after session and none of those sessions are the same. Um, they're all totally different and I have to show up putting my expectations of where they're at and how things are going to be to one side because I have no idea what's happened to them in the intervening time and where the energy wants to take them in this moment and it's always a 
well, it is that thing of trusting that process for me rather than going in there with, okay, this is what we're going to do this week, you know, this time. So it's, um, yeah, it's a constant, constant education in dismantling any ideas that I might have about how this needs to be and how this needs to go uh, and giving up control because control is deathly for this this process you know um, mm -hmm. there is no control and the less we need to control then the easier things can can flow but all of us are out and out control freaks you know we need our structures we need our safety we need to know <laughs> what's going to happen where the next bit of money is coming from where the next meal is coming you know we need that and that's okay too but the deepening process into uh, life has got me i'm held in these fields of life um when that really starts to penetrate and take hold then then magic happens you know because those fields of life are where the miracles lie, not in my notes and in my protocols and all of that stuff is great and it's done with the best of intentions, but it's but it's when we break out of those mm -hmm. protocols that, that the the magic really happens. It's interesting to me that you talk about the tapestry because I'm just literally preparing a series of workshops for spring to happen in London and, and I'm writing about the tapestry of life at the moment, which is what I've always seen, this, this beautiful weaving of every thought and every action we've ever taken form this extraordinary tapestry that is our energy field, our personal energy field, but also the tapestry of life that we get to present back to creation and say, here, this is what I've made of <laughs> this 70, 80 years. And you know, if I look back over my tapestry, a lot of it is pretty threadbare and knotted and tangled. And now I'm starting to work with more consciousness about how I'm weaving the colors of my life, you know, and, and, and how I'm allowing <laughs> the universe to, to be the weaver rather than, than me, in a sense, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm intrigued by that tapestry coming up again. There's a lot of the people, wonderful people who are who are listening and watching. I've been trying to watch over here, Samantha, Karen, and Linda and Donna, um, sending you kudos and saying how how wonderful uh, it is to hear some of these ideas and that they agree with you about um, giving up control. David, you've got some events coming up. Tell us about it. We've been talking for about an hour now, so we really talk already. My God, that's amazing, isn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe 15 minutes. I hadn't even no, looked at the clock. No, no, gosh, we've, we're on for about an hour already. I'm, I'm just shocked that the toddlers haven't blown through the door already. My phone keeps ringing. It's rang like seven times since, since we've been going. But that's neither here nor there. Please let us know what's coming up um, in your offering. Okay, this Saturday. Thank you for this opportunity. This No, this Sunday, the 2nd of uh, September, I'm offering a teleconference which for the life of me i can't remember what it oh it's right so it's about the reweaving of naturalness and um, i was just doing a a um a five-day retreat a couple of weeks ago and again it was that thing of trusting the field being told day after day session after session we've got this you know don't worry about this we know what we're doing and in one of those sessions a Native American field of wisdom came in and said, we want to help people to reweave themselves back into the natural fabric of life. Um, we are going to be placeholders for all of the indigenous tribes on the planet and for all of the tribes that people have belonged to over their incarnational history. Uh, and I was given instructions on how to do this, play some beautiful uh, Native American type music. Um, and 
just invite people to lie down and invite those fields of energy in. And of course, as soon as they came in, and from my perspective, the room was full of Native American uh, shamans who were working with each of us as individuals, then come in the crystal fields, they want to participate, then the, the nature spirit fields, they want to participate, then the fields of tree beings, they want to part. So, and we are at a genetic level related to all of these levels of reality. And of course, our process over many thousands of years has been to separate ourselves out from that integrated field of wholeness of life and regard ourselves as different, as special. That phrase, and man shall have dominion over the earth has caused so much chaos on this planet. So we're, this is what I'm gonna do. They, they made it very clear that they wanted to do this with a wider field of people, as well as the group that worked together in London. It was a very, very beautiful event, and it will obviously necessarily be different doing it as a teleconference, um, but I know sort of how that goes. Um, so that's what I'm offering on Sunday. Uh, it will be this reweaving of the field of naturalness and being woven back into some of the deep connections that we have that have woven a bit or that have, have worn a bit thin for us that we have slightly disconnected from so we're coming back into uh, a deep deep connectedness the body and the earth and all of the fields of life on this planet um, so that's going to be lovely and then the weekend afterwards I'm running a a two-part piece on the Saturday and Sunday, which is about becoming visible. Uh, and that's sort of a workshop. Again, I ran it in person. It was a one-day workshop, and I'm offering it as an online event for a wider field of people um, all over the planet. And that's, you know, we've got this idea that, oh, I should be visible. I should be writing a blog. I should be running workshops. I should be writing a best-selling leader, whatever it is. But from my perspective, the way we all need to be visible first and foremost is at the level of frequency. And um, the night before I was running this workshop in London, I was traveling up to London on the train and I was just gazing out of the window and it was a beautiful uh, evening, sun, the sun was setting. And as I was gazing, this large angel uh, showed up in my field of vision and um, made it clear that he wanted, or it, it wasn't a, uh, agenda but it wanted to participate in the workshop and it wanted to offer an activation of the thymus gland and um, I said okay and, and who are you and he said <laughs> <laughs> and it, so it introduced itself as the angel of radiance um, and it was there to help us unfold this the thymus gland which has become atrophied for most of us as we um, as we move beyond puberty and from what I was being told the thymus gland is meant to be very active throughout our life and to help us anchor into an anchor fifth dimensional fields of frequency and radius radiance into our bodies so that will be a part of of that but um, that's a really deep um, rich piece of work that takes place over the Saturday and Sunday. So those are the two offerings I've got um, coming up online over the next uh, couple of weeks. And you can see those, you can find those on Facebook or on my website, which is www.davidmanningenergywork.com. Perfect. Yeah, we were just being asked in the chat over here how people can get involved and, and listen to your wonderful work. And David has some pre-recorded offerings. Um, I remember yeah, there's a bunch of free stuff on my website. Yeah. Um, I on the events tab and there's a free offerings page. And so there's a bunch of, of the meditations. I work with sound in the meditations 20 years ago, uh, a native American shaman dropped into my field and said, I want to sing healing ceremonies for the bodies that show up. And I was not impressed at all. I didn't want to be, um, <laughs> have anything to do with that. And he actually said to me, but I'm you in another lifetime. And that really allowed me to trust again, trust the field. And that, uh, sort of gave an internal permission for those sounds to express themselves. And now I've never trained in the use of sound, but these sounds, 
I think of them or I experience them as universal sounds, life sounds in effect, and they dismantle energies and coagulate energies. You know, they do all sorts of things and people experience them often very profoundly. Um, so the sound is, is a big part of, of what happens, but again, it isn't a thought out process. It's, uh, it's just a, a part of, of, of an instinctual approach to, uh, to holding these fields. So, um, so yeah, that's always a, a bit of, of, uh, of the magic that unfolds. I love what you do in sessions with your sound. It is to me, the epitome of, being authentic to the energy emanating from you and within and without you because it is it's so you you know it is <clears throat> it's not um being like anyone else out there at all i think that's in itself some of the biggest magic that that you have to offer the world well thank you likewise um blown away by your work and, and the sessions you've done with me have been um, have had a really deep impact for me I know you're booked up way 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 in advance so um, so but I would say to anybody you know book some time with you because but the whole process of quantum healing is is phenomenal isn't it because it just takes us out of the linear sequence um, yeah. to that space where where miracles can happen, I think, and, and where we get to connect dots through vast strands of time and pull things together. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's totally beautiful, totally magical. Yeah. Big tipping my hat to Dolores Cannon because her books made such yeah. a difference. For me. Oh God, changed everything, changed everything. But there's so many more people doing this work right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what, what I always like to say is, you know, there's some of us out the, out here who are, you know, We've, we've made um, uh, enough of an impression that we, have, that we have some bookings ahead in time, but there's so many more people coming on board. And the most important thing, it's not so much the experience. It's not so much how many videos or whatever. It's, it's the energy and the intention in the heart of that, of that person. And I have seen some of the most brilliant and beautiful sessions right out of the gate, right out of the gate by by somebody who is just aching to help other people they may have been doing i don't know banking or accounting or some kind of work that they didn't like for so long or maybe they're doing this on the side and they finally feel like it's worthy of what's going on in their own heart and that is so powerful i'm telling you it's it's just incredibly powerful some of these people who are being t told yes you can do this <laughs> there is not a thing i i just had a woman I, on i was emailing her back and forth earlier today and she's a little concerned because um uh, she's in her mid seventies and, and there's a little bit going on with maybe, you know, short term memory or whatever. And I'm like, Oh my, no problem. Which one of us doesn't have that. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> and, and just, there, there's just not a problem the way we've got it set up. You can refer back down and the whole thing is just be there, you know, just be there. Well, um, David, thank you so much. I think um, we're going to wrap up the show right now. I, thank you for everything. And before I go, I want to thank very much uh, my good friend, Greg Prescott of in5d.com, who makes this show possible. Thank you so much, dear, beautiful, wonderful Greg. And You're superb. Greg in Florida, huh? Lovely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Candice, for inviting me. I've really enjoyed this, and it's flown by. I, I had... Uh, uh, yeah, no idea that the time was going so quickly. It's been really, and it's always really helpful because I never know quite what I'm going to say, but but it helps me to clarify things for myself, you know, when I get to talk about it because often I don't. So, um, so yeah, I really For do. me as well. For me as well. The same exact thing. Coming together like this helps. That That's why I love teaching so much. I, you know, teaching, I'm always then better at whatever it is I'm doing, but I think most, most teachers out there, they, they realize that. <laughs> that's why they're in it, right? You know, they just get yeah. better at whatever it is. Yeah, that they're doing. So I'm intrigued to see what your seven phone call, I bet maybe your, 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 well, I know exactly what they're about. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Candace is waiting for a grandchild here. Well, yeah, but no, that's room, not right? it. This is all stuff going on back at, at camp. It, you know, I, before getting on, I'm like, is everything all set over there? Yes, 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 yes. And no, it all fell apart. And people are like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't have an hour. I can't have an hour. <laughs> But it's okay. Everything's fine. It's it's all it's all cool. You can trust the field, huh? Yes. <laughs> I hope it didn't show too, too much on, <laughs> on my face. No, it's all fine and a little humorous. Actually. There, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you're, oh you're so beautiful too. I love doing this. Let's do this more often. I would love don't, to. I would love to. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to keep you online, but I'm going to say thank you so much to my Facebook friends and uh, see you on the next show. Thanks, everybody.